So when I hear Social Security, there are a few things that come to mind. And I'm sure it's the same for most of the people watching this video. But with the thoughts that come to mind, do any of them include funding shortfall or liquidity crisis? Wait, there's no way that Social Security could run out of money, right? And is there a chance that Social Security and possibly even Medicare could be cut? Well, everyone, allow me to explain. So, for the more than 66 million monthly beneficiaries that include retired workers, survivors, and long-term disabled who all receive their largest cost of living adjustment, or COLA, on a percentage basis in 41 years, it's needless to say that 2023 is a fantastic year and has produced the biggest boost to their monthly payout in nominal dollar terms in the program's entire history. However, Mr. Biden has leaked his plans to change Social Security, a shocking announcement that could potentially enforce new program changes that will affect millions now and potentially millions more in the future. But the looming question that we are all asking is, Will Social Security still be around by the time I'm old enough to retire? And the reason why this is such an important question is because it isn't so much a matter of when, but more so a matter of if you will be able to retire. As we can attest to the increasingly challenging uphill battles that the Biden economy has hit so many hardworking and low income and fixed income families with over the past two years. And as it sits now, if the right changes aren't made soon, well, Social Security will further weaken, and there are estimates of cuts nearing almost 25% for retired worker benefits. A deep slash that would really put a massive strain on millions of people. And despite the great news that SSA recipients received to start off the year, there are predictions that 2023 may unfortunately see the end of these victories for retirees and this government stimulated financial high may be short lived because the social security program is facing a massive long term funding shortfall and to be more specific a $20.4 trillion funding shortfall that's been growing larger with each passing year and almost faster than the US national debt and I'm not so sure that what Mr. Biden has planned is the best solution to Social Security's long-term funding issues. So if you would, please allow me to explain and share with you all the information that is currently available on this breaking news update that may very well impact you now, if not very soon in the near future. And this is definitely something W-2 and salaried employees are going to want to pay very close attention to because there's a large percentage of the current working class that is paying into the Social Security program now with each and every paycheck. And they're doing so under the pretext and the assumption that the Social Security program will pay out when it's their time to retire. I want to share a big thank you with all of you for always liking all of my videos and for choosing to subscribe to my channel and continuing to return for all my newest and latest video updates. I really do appreciate it and I want to let you all know about Hard Assets Alliance and there's a link in the description for anyone out there who is looking to diversify their investments and retirement portfolios just like I've been doing. Hard Assets Alliance provides true ownership with global vaults and on-demand delivery, delivery access for simple and easy investing online 24-7 from a trusted platform with over $3 billion in assets and more than 100,000 investors. Open an account today and get started. And don't miss out on getting your free stocks from Moomoo and taking advantage of their limited time offer that is running for only a few more days and will be over at the end of the month where you can get free stocks. All you have to do is open an account and you'll get one free stock. And with a $100 deposit, you'll get a total of five free stocks and a deposit of $1,000 will instantly get you 15 free stocks total. And that's free money. And I like free money, don't you? So with Mr. Biden at the wheel, we have been on what some would describe as a wild ride. Just a few weeks ago, Biden approved additional budget spending to send another $1.1 billion to Ukraine before signing an astonishing $1.7 trillion funding bill that would provide tens of billions of dollars more in additional aid and new aid to Ukraine for its fight against the Russian military. And just here recently, the Biden administration allowed what has been described by the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, as a massive climate disaster. And they are calling on President Biden to reverse course because the window to act is rapidly closing to avert catastrophic climate change, with this plan only taking us one giant step closer to the edge.
After approving proceedings of the Willow Project that will pump more than 600 million barrels of oil from a fragile ecosystem that the Biden administration just recently cleared, and during Mr. Biden's speech, he vowed to protect country. In his State of the Union address, when referring to one of now many China balloons flying overhead at over 60,000 feet spying on us and our sensitive military operations. All these events mentioned, as well as countless more, have led to the increasing divide and widening of the gap between the Democratic Party and party leaders, lawmakers, donors, consultants, and the actual voters who ultimately decide elections according to recent poll results. And thus, nearly half of Americans had no confidence in Biden's ability to make the right decisions for the country's future. And I'm not making this stuff up, folks. A Washington Post ABC News poll broke this all down just before the State of the Union address. The same poll that revealed that of those who responded, 84% of respondents in the poll said they were no better off financially now than they were before Mr. Biden took office. And 41% said they were actually worse off. And so now you all may understand my feelings behind why I'm a little nervous about Joe's plans and the long-term future of the Social Security Retirement Benefits System that so many million Americans are relying on for their retirement plans after working their whole lives. Now more than ever before too, with the number of working Americans who have more than one job just to make ends meet is at an all-time high. And so since 1940, the Social Security Board of Trustees has released an annual report detailing the health of the program. And in this over 200 page report, it provides a comprehensive history of every dollar collected by the Social Security Administration, as well as where each of those dollars was distributed. And they've been doing this for over 80 years. That's more than eight decades, folks. And while doing so, it also makes educated assumptions as to the future solvency of Social Security based on fiscal policy and a long list of ever-changing demographic factors. And according to the 2022 trustees report, the Social Security Retirement Funding and Supplemental Income Program that many seniors rely on is on track for an estimated $20.4 trillion short, short of its funding needs through the year 2096. So in other words, if pay cuts were to continue with annual cost of living adjustments, there would be more than $20 trillion missing that would ultimately prevent full payouts to future benefit recipients between now, 2023, and 2096. And if this shortfall isn't resolved and additional revenue and maybe even a combination of cutting outlays, it is predicted that retired workers and survivor benefits could be slashed by 23% as soon as the year 2034. And this means that the next wave of retirees looking forward to no longer working may have to make a change of plans. So Joe Biden has a four step plan to alter Social Security a plan that he's been working on since before elected president in November of 2020. Biden's four-point proposal that he proclaimed would strengthen America's top retirement program by extending its solvency seeks to do the following. And in no particular order, number one, increase payroll taxation on the wealthy. Two, boost the special minimum benefit for lifetime low earners. Three, raise benefits via the primary insurance amount for long-lived beneficiaries age 78 to 82 and four shift the cola or cost of living adjustment to either the consumer price index or the elderly cpie so yes you heard that right folks biden's proposal is to increase the 12.4 percent payroll tax and with biden's plan the payroll tax would be reinstated for earned income above four hundred thousand dollars while creating a donut hole where collection would remain exempt for wages and salaries between the maximum taxable earnings cap and four hundred thousand dollars and since inflation tends to seedily lift the maximum taxable earnings cap over time, this donut hole should completely close in a few decades, theoretically. But perhaps the biggest problem isn't so much the money, but the approval and getting the votes from Congress. So Joe hasn't actually publicly pushed for his Social Security reform plan in the two years since entering the Oval Office. And during Biden's State of the Union address, he was excited to share. So my many of some of my Republican friends want to take the economy hostage. I get it unless I agree to their economic plans. All of you at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans 
want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Let me give you, anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. You know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks, the idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. <laughs> folks. So, folks, as we all apparently agree, Social Security and Medicare is off the, off the books now, right? They're not to be stopped. All right. We got unanimity. Social Security and Medicare are a lifeline for millions of seniors. Americans have to pay into them from the very first paycheck they started. So tonight, let's all agree, and apparently we are, let's stand up for seniors. Stand up and show them. We will not cut Social Security. We will not cut Medicare. Those benefits belong to the American people. They earned it. And if anyone tries to cut Social Security, which apparently no one's going to do, and if anyone tries to cut Medicare, I'll stop them. I'll veto it. And look, I'm not going to allow them to take away, be taken away. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. But apparently, it's not going to be a problem. Next month, when I offered my fiscal plan, I asked my Republican friends to lay down their plan as well. I really mean it. Let's sit down together and discuss our mutual plans together. And despite having both Democrats and Republicans cheering Biden's remarks, it raised the big question. Does the president have the support of lawmakers in Congress to enact changes to Social Security? Well, unfortunately, all signs point to no. And so, according to The Motley Fool, the Republicans' ideology is miles apart from Democrats when it comes to fixing Social Security. And although both parties agree that a resolution is needed to strengthen the program before the budget shortfall and li liquidity crisis begins to really impact benefit recipients, neither side has been willing to find anything resembling common ground with their opposition. And then there is a slight problem with the math. Yeah, so Biden's Social Security plan isn't as favorable as one might think just based on how it appears on the surface. However, based on an analysis conducted by the Urban Institute in October of 2020, Biden's proposal only improves the program solvency by five years. And since much of the revenue boost from increasing taxes will be diverted to greater COLAs or cost of living adjustments, a higher special minimum benefit and boosted primary insurance amounts to long live beneficiaries, well, simply put, Biden's plan would likely struggle to gain broad support in Congress. So it looks like we are pretty much back to square one for the time being. But there's still time to crunch numbers, formulate plans, introduce different proposals, and attempt to salvage the Social Security Retirement Benefits Program for millions and millions of Americans before it's too late. And who knows, depending on the upcoming 2024 presidential election, we could see a major change in the White House that could trigger major reform and improve the Social Security retirement benefits program so that people won't need to worry so much about their retirement life and livelihood. So everyone, thank you all for sticking around to watch this video all the way to the end. I'm very grateful for each and every one of you and thank you to the subscribers. Please make sure your alerts bell is filled in so you get notified immediately when future updates and breaking news updates are published. Information that matters to you most concerning our economy, personal finances, the stock market, housing market, investing, retirement, 
savings, and wealth building strategies. And be sure to review the links in the description. I have included 100% free access to info and opportunities, including Hard Assets Alliance. And there's a link there for anyone who's looking to diversify their investments and retirement portfolios like I've been doing. Hard Assets Alliance provides true ownership with global vaults and on-demand delivery, delivery access for simple and easy investing online 24-7 from a trusted platform with over $3 billion in assets and more than 100,000 investors. Folks, it's easy to open an account today and get started. And don't miss out on getting free stocks from Moomoo. Moo. And take advantage of their limited time offer that is running for only a few more days and will be over at the end of the month where you can get free stocks. All you have to do is open an account. You'll get one free stock. And with a $100 deposit, you'll get a total of five free stocks. And a deposit of $1,000 will instantly get you 15 free stocks total. That's free money, folks. And I like free money, don't you? And until next time, you guys take care. Be safe. I'll see you real soon. Bye.